Hello, my name is Bill Miller and welcome to this brief tutorial for Dorico. Many folks have switched up to Dorico recently in the face of Finale's bombshell announcement a couple weeks ago. If you're watching this video, you may be one of those displaced individuals and are probably looking for ways to make the transition a little smoother. There's a significant learning curve with the software and I'd like to help by sharing some things I've learned that have improved my experience with Dorico over the years. Please note that these tips are accurate for Dorico Pro and might not be available in Dorico Elements or Dorico SE. These tips are being delivered using Windows keyboard shortcuts. Some may have different combinations for Apple devices, but the logic behind them remains the same. If you find this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Now, on to the tips. Number one, you can use note input on multiple tracks simultaneously. You can add notes to multiple instruments at the same time by first pressing Shift and N to enter note input mode. Then hold Shift and the up or down arrows to select adjacent staffs. Then start typing notes using either your keyboard or MIDI keyboard. Please note that if you're combining concert and transposed instruments, you should use this method only in concert pitch mode, which can be selected in the bottom left corner of your screen. Number two, changing note duration while in note input mode. You can increase or decrease the length of a selected note by holding Shift and Alt and the left or right arrow keys. This will not completely destroy or displace any other notes you've created. Dorco will adjust the respective length of adjacent notes to allow for the change. Tip number three, use R or Shift R to quickly repeat musical material. Dorco streamlines the process of creating ostinatos and other repeated patterns. By default, when you press R, you can quickly duplicate whatever musical material is selected. Shift R, followed by the percentage symbol, will create a bar repeat symbol. Bar repeats can be applied to multiple measures simultaneously. Tip number four, popovers are your friend. Popovers allow you to quickly change or input things like bar lines, meter, key signature, dynamics, and more. The keyboard commands for these popovers are pretty intuitive. For example, Shift B brings up the bar popover. Shift K is for key signatures and Shift M is for meter. Darko's manual has a full list of these keyboard shortcuts, though you can change these key combinations if you so choose. Tip number five, use Dorico's jump bar to issue commands and speed up your workflow. If you press J, you bring up Dorico's jump bar, which allows you to quickly type in any available command to apply to whatever music is currently selected. This is helpful if you don't have or know a key command for a certain action and will keep you from having to scour countless menus to find what you want. What's even cooler is that the jump bar will retain your previous inputted command, saving you even more time. Tip number six, global versus local properties. Sometimes you'll want your scores and parts to look different. By default, any properties or attributes you change are local. This helps prevent you from accidentally transforming multiple parts drastically and ruining your composition. However, should you want the score layout and relevant part layout to reflect the same changes, make sure you select the Globally button in the Properties panel. Make sure you switch it back to Locally when you're done. Tip number seven, tabs. Similar to Sibelius, Dorico allows you to open multiple tabs for easy access between the score and different part layouts within the same project window. By pressing Ctrl and T, you can choose between available layouts and move between them at will. Tip number eight, the Play tab. In the Play tab or window, you can assign sounds other than those in Dorico's default Halion library to instruments if you so desire. Click on the VST and MIDI tab and add your preferred VST library and any instruments you'll want. Then select Track Inspector and apply the library, instrument, channel, and port to the selected instrument. Add an expression map to further ensure that playback is as accurate as possible. In this example, I'm using my East-West Opus libraries. If something goes wrong and you need to start over from Dorco's default playback settings, don't panic. Simply go up to the Play menu, and from the resulting drop-down menu, select Playback Template. Choose Dorico's default playback template, then click Apply and Close. These tips barely scratch the surface on what Dorico can do, but I hope they at least got the ball rolling and were useful. If there's something you want me to cover more in depth, please leave a comment below. Take care, and I'll see you next time.